you see violence every day. Clarence Elkins is currently being held in solitary confinement. It does still stay with you. Again, has been there for seven years, missed a lot of Christmases, a lot of time with his family. Sudden noise, burst of noise of any kind. Uh, in prison, it always meant something? Oh, yeah. Seven years in prison took a debilitating toll on Clarence Elkins. He was 35 years old, a married father of two, when he was wrongfully convicted in 1998 of raping his six-year-old niece and raping and murdering his mother-in-law. He was confined to a maximum security prison. I've seen violence almost on a daily basis of every kind, whether it's, you know, somebody getting beat, or stabbed, or uh, maybe sexual violence. Uh, I've seen a lot, I mean. And while I was in there seeing all of this, I always thought if I ever got proved my innocence and walked out of the prison, that I would be just like when I walked in. I'm still pinching myself. Little did I know I was totally wrong. After all those years, a cigarette butt tossed in the prison yard by the real killer provided the DNA Clarence needed to clear his name. It was over, or so he thought. He walked out of prison but into a life filled with anxiety and depression, fear of crowds and loud noises, and relentless nightmares. Mostly they're just violent. They're very violent, um, on the edge of, you know, the worst death. Uh, for myself or friends or a loved one or something. Uh, they're just um, really chaotic and really scary. I'm ready for it. You know, as soon as I feel him start to twitch. Molly Elkins, his second wife, knew Clarence long before she ever met him. She used to work for the attorney general's office, and in her role there, she gathered information and helped file paperwork that eventually led to his release. She was the one who dialed the phone the day Clarence got the news that he was getting out. It has an effect on you. Molly and Clarence eventually met and married, built their dream home, became grandparents. But the nightmares and the anxiety persisted, paralyzing him and having a huge impact on her. Their mind races continuously. And um, we just I'm just hoping that this will be something to help, um, oh, help me to be somewhat normal again. And um, that's, that's what I'm hoping for, that it will, it will be a way of, of uh, a new chapter in my new life. The new chapter begins in Chicago, where a doctor there is performing a procedure that if it works, is nothing short of a miracle. Very excited, Dr. Lipov. I Lippoff. hope it works as well as advertised. Anesthesiologist Dr. Eugene Lipov pioneered a treatment called stellate ganglion block. The hope is that it will finally put a stop to the nightmares, that overwhelming stress, the PTSD that has kept Clarence a prisoner in his own life. Basically with the nerves that control the sympathetic system, live in the neck, that, that connect to the brain. So we put local anesthetic on that, and the idea is when you numb that up, it reboots the patient's brain to the pre-trauma state. Dr. Lipov has treated military veterans and victims of traumatic accidents, violent assaults, but never an exoneree, and never someone who suffers from secondary PTSD as Molly does. Anxiety because of the stuff he goes through, it's almost like it's contagious or something. And um, I thought, you know what, we can, we can have a better life than this. We, can, we deserve a better life. I'm excited, I'm ready, I'm ready for this. Hey, Molly. The hope is for a new normal. The fear is, if this doesn't work, whatever will. It'll be a new chapter in our life. After one last sleepless night, the Elkins prepare for the procedure. I love you. This is the medicine that does the job. It will numb up the area around sympathetic ganglia or fight and flight nervous system in the neck. Okay, hold on. The procedure itself only takes about 15 minutes, but the impact is almost immediate. Dr. Lipoff says he'll know within 30 to 60 minutes whether the block actually worked. So let's go check. How you feeling? I said, I just feel like, she said, it's the block. She said, it's not the anesthetic. You're, it's just pretty much you know, out of your system, like it's, it's the block. Can you even believe it? No. Within an hour, Molly feels the effects a calmness, the constant internal jitters vanished. Clarence at first is unsure. He lies there for a few minutes imagining the stressful situations that set him off. 
a big trigger for him, any mention of the prosecutor on his case. And there it is, the miracle moment. The block doesn't turn off the memory, just the emotional attachment to it. And the realization that it worked overwhelms him. I feel yeah, relieved and um, like, like a weight's been lifted off of my back and uh, off my memory, I could say, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to a better life. The tears that haven't come in years, the sense of normal he never thought he'd get back, as he describes it like night and day. Clarence hopes it's a breakthrough not only for him, but for other exonerees. I just think it's, it's, I'm on the right track. I do, already I think I'm on the right track. And I'm very excited and emotional for that. In Chicago, Stacy Fry, Fox 8 News.